is hard. Get some artwork done. Start putting this shit out. It's got some. I'll show you the artwork. The artwork for the table. Let me see. Yeah. Pretty fucking fire. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> Look at that. I had my friend uh, illustrate. Oh that. yeah. <laughs> this is literally fire. <laughs> that delicious, yeah, wonderful New York pizza. But I'm not talking. You feel me? man, yeah. <laughs> I love that you made it sound like a sample. That's that's super fresh. Make me want to rap. Listen, man. You know you got the bars. You hold them out. I I have so many. Too many. Too many. You gain leverage already. Say you have 100 songs already on Spotify, iTunes, all that stuff, right? Because I know I followed Russ and he got a profit split because you gain all that leverage, like a back catalog of 100 songs on Spotify mm -hmm. and iTunes. How do you gain that leverage where you get a profit split versus a royalty deal? A profit split with who? With your label. Everyone in here is entitled to royalty. Yeah. As a producer, a writer, an artist, like if you produce on a song, you, you're entitled to some kind of royalty um, point in that, right? And like the average, a good amount of royalty point for a song is like four points, for instance, right? So um, I think with the Russ situation, he has, he amassed so much uh, income and he just gained so much leverage from his popularity that he was able to negotiate a profit split with the label. Because if he, it, there, he is the money maker for the label. So he was able to go into that situation and like negotiate that for himself because he had the upper hand. So, but Russ, pretty much like the model, I'm um, sorry to say for you Russ haters, but like he kind of is the model that you should follow. Like if I was an independent artist, I would literally do everything Russ did. Put out a million mixtapes, put songs out, start my tomb core, collect all my money, save my money, like, and, and just keep going, you know, do small shows and build small and wait for it to grow. And now look, you know, so uh, I think that's what happened with him. That and on going into 2019, getting this project mixed, so I played a piece of it. Right. I think, I think the music is good. I like that song and it's not even really mixed yet. Once it's mixed, it'll sound crispy. The idea that you mentioned that like, you know, the whole story of first uh, generation immigrants, you know, and and like kind of having that backstory. I think, you know, the music could be amazing, but I, to me, if you want to get people to care about it, selling that story. I wouldn't even really put it as selling the story. I would just put it as like telling your truth and get, giving people an opportunity to like uh, f hear your story and relate to it, okay. right? Because you, you want to attract other people that relate to what you represent. Show them when you guys are in the studio. You know, it doesn't always have to be these like elaborate uh, videos and like songs. Like it doesn't have to, the, the promotional tool doesn't always have to be the music. You know, it could be a video on YouTube or a bunch of videos, maybe a weekly vlog, maybe, you know, Instagram. I mean, as, as the years go by, we're all realizing as artists that that's literally part of the process now. Yeah, no, it's content. He tells me all the time. We watch your videos all the time. You be telling me, I gotta post, gotta post, gotta post. I think most of us kind of know that already at this point, right? Because like the days of like having the luxury of playing the black background are just completely over. Yeah, 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 yeah. Unless you're Kendrick, Drake, Rihanna, you get the idea. Jay Z. Yeah, like you got you got to be out. Even like people like Cardi B and and uh, Migos and stuff like they can't afford to to not be on social media and they're huge one person that I wish would fall back is yay <laughs> but like he doesn't I'm telling you if I sat down with yay I would tell him like yo bro you don't have to say shit like just just stay in the like we all loved yay when he was like mystique right like imagine if Kanye went ghost on all his social media all of 2019 right we didn't hear from him for a whole year yeah, he and then in 2020 he drops a classic yeah. he the guy with, with with a shoe yeah. he would be back mm -hmm. disappear boom and then when he comes back oh my god the yeah. god is back you know and now he's on twitter you get the idea right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, clap it up <laughs> like really just don't don't um don't worry too much about like the other stuff really is just now, I think, 
80 to 90 percent of your time should be spent on just like making a bunch of stuff you're in creative mode right and and keep working keep keep making music you know like for you is there a particular like how are you in terms of like not feeling creative walk me through that a little bit like I don't even really know it's just like every time I sit down to try and make a beat like I'm there for like an hour and everything is just like I'm like oh this is trash right so maybe maybe you're comparing like your stuff to other people or maybe putting high expectation on yourself a little bit yeah well yeah that's I don't know if that's true but <laughs> it's true. It's true. New York is even crazier yeah. but what you do get in New York is stuff like this and also being able to feed off of energy and like become inspired I think y you guys moving up here it could be a good move because you know you'll gain this like next level inspiration that you might not get in South Carolina. Try to go as many events like this as possible and like just be out, go out there, you know what I mean? Like save up some money to start booking studio time at different studios, like Premiere Studios and Blast Off and just be in that environment. You know, you never know who you can run into, but I would say, not, like I said, 90% of your time should be just in the studio, being creative, perfecting your crafts and, and just push that way. You guys are, are well on your way. I love it. And just think like, like, no, nah, like, that's not it. And <laughs> it's like, I'll scrap that. And do you think, like, it's, it's more beneficial to scrap it and start new or, like, power through that and try to, like, make something out of it? I'm always a fan of powering through. Yeah. yeah. Um, but everyone kind of works differently. You know, everyone's kind of wired differently. Um, the way I'm personally wired is, like, if I'm not feeling something, I'll, I'll literally power through it. Uh, and if I get um, tired or uninspired while powering through it, then that that's a signal to me that it like wasn't my best. I'll show that stuff to people and they'll love it. So you never want to think that something is bad. I just don't believe in like scrapping stuff. I, I feel like every idea, whether you think it's like the shittiest idea in the world or the best idea, I feel like every idea is special. Power through what you can and yeah. And, and, and uh, uh, the thing about like finishing stuff is like, it's really on you, right? Cause no no song is really ever finished like you can literally work on something forever so you have to like kind of discipline yourself to decide that for yourself so I, if i were you i would get into the habit of like being content with like okay this is done i'm just gonna let this go and start on on a fresh new idea you know but you have to find that for yourself put up too <laughs> Because the neighbors can hear the music I'm losing it.